Okay, hello everyone. Uh, today we'd like to share uh, our ideas and findings about off block time, very important time in the stack of uh, ACDM and not only ACDM, but all air side operations. And we will start with the question, what is actually off block time and why is it important? Well, let me take a first stab at that one. Um, I guess airports are all about managing incoming and outgoing flights, right? And knowing when flights are coming and going is kind of essential to get that responsibility right. So the off block time typically refers to the moment that the aircraft is either uh, ready uh, from, from ground handling point of view or uh, when it's actually going off block, so when the pushback operation basically starts. And that is an important time because if you want to plan your departure sequence, which means that you don't have planes waiting on the taxiways, um, or if you want to plan your uh, gates, you also need to know when the gate becomes available for your next flight. This time, this milestone of knowing when an aircraft is going to be ready to go off lock or actually go off lock um, is basically critical to getting your airside operations right. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I guess, uh, Chris, that's, that's a very good point. If we, for example, look at, at uh, managing the flow of, of traffic on the ground, off-block time is really crucial um, to simply understand or to simply minimize um, all the effects that a bad off-block time has, uh, especially if we look, for example, at, at a sustainability perspective. Um, there are certain examples where an aircraft lands and is allocated to a certain stand um, and the off block time was not correctly set or was not updated um, early enough and eventually the arriving aircraft uh, is stands now in front of this aircraft stand because they still believe that they can go to this gate and that means that, it, that they normally have to idle for two three maybe up to ten minutes uh, where they burn kerosene, which is a cost driver, but where they also kind of uh, emit a CO2 emissions. So from that perspective, I guess uh, an OBT, per, uh, uh, having a accurate OBT, uh, apart from many other things, is, is first and foremost also something that goes into the sustainability area. Okay, Very nice. Understood. And how do we get uh, overlook time at the moment? And what's the issue with, with it? Um, so it depends a little bit geographically. In Europe, there is the AC, official ACDM framework uh, sort of imposed by Eurocontrol. Um, and then there, it's mandatory at the larger airports for each airline to provide a an, an, uh, target off block time, for example. Um, into the AODB so that all airport stakeholders can see that. And, and there it's typically done by the ground handler. So the ground handler takes responsibility of continuously updating during the turnaround when they think they'll be ready with the aircraft. Um, now it's different, for example, in the US um, where there is not a similar uh, situation, but there's a next gen initiative from the FAA where there is a concept like earliest off block time. And again, uh, the airline is sort of responsible for providing this earliest off block time milestone um, even though it hasn't been as widely adopted and implemented yet. And I think that in the US, what we hear and see is that the carriers are not just, just sure how, how they're actually going to do that once it's going to be there. Mm. But yeah, yeah, Willem, I think you know a bit more about the, the problems that this brings, right? Yeah, I mean, in the end, you have um, in Europe, a turnaround is a very time sensitive and, and hectic uh, activity. So if, if you have to manually update, for example, the predicted off block time, uh, sorry, the, the target off block time, which is set by the ground handler, and which is, which is a very, very important input factor for any ACDM process. Um, these times are often when the process is actually right, are set maybe once, maybe twice. Uh, I heard from airports where they are actually updated three times, but they're still updated manually. So if it's very hectic, if you have like a, a very uh, hot day or a very rainy day, snowy day, uh, and maybe the aircraft is already delayed, 
updating the, the TOBT, for example, is something that is not <laughs> on a very high priority on your, on your to-do list. So, um, and then maybe it is updated once and then afterwards no longer. So that means that we have some kind of, of uncertainty or, or at least not a very high accuracy when it comes to, to the TOBT. Um, and then taking into consideration again, how important the OBT is and the accuracy of the OBT, that is in my opinion, one of the, the biggest problems we are today facing with, with any kind of, of, uh, of block time setting. And you could even argue that on those rainy or hot or snowy days, the days where it gets hectic, yeah. um, that's actually the days when you need it the most, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, totally understand. And how can OBT be better estimated? What do you think? What are the ways? So we have now set of problems, right? The poor accuracy of block time. What are the ways to improve it? Um, yeah, I think that's a very exciting topic because um, te technology has obviously ad advanced a lot in the last few years and decades. And I think one of the main developments that that's shaping all different parts of our lives has to do with artificial intelligence and, uh, and machine learning where you know we're trying to predict things. Like even if you look at uh, an application that almost everyone is using like, like uh, the Google Maps and, and the routing on Google, Google Maps, what it's trying to do is to take real-time data to pre predict for you what's the best way to get from A to B, right? Um, and, and that's also something that we are trying to introduce into uh, the way airport operations are being run. Because the earlier you know, and the more accurate you know what the situation is going to be like, um, the better you can manage your operation. So um, instead of the human estimator, which we talked about, what, what we are bringing into the market is what we call the predicted off-block time, um, which is a, a machine learning predictor, an algorithm that, that uses data that airports already have in their AODB um, and can be further enriched with real-time turnaround data. Um, and it continuously predicts um, what is the off-block time for each individual aircraft going to be? Um, and, and it has actually already shown to be much more accurate in, than, than the TOBT that's currently being generated by the ground handler. Yeah. Yeah, and you're, you're raising a very interesting topic there, Chris, um, regarding uh, the, or including uh, turnaround timestamps and including the turnaround data. I think that is, that is kind of the, the basics. Um, we are, or, or the, 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 the accuracy can even be improved if we, for example, look into including um, third party data or, or even more data, for example, from a DCS. Okay, what is the current status of the boarding process? How many people are actually checked in? How many bags are checked in? How many um, uh, wheelchairs do I have? Uh, also some other data like, like IoT sensors. Uh, what is maybe the status of, of a GPU? Is it running out of fuel soon? And, and, and all of these different data points, I guess to sum it up, um, in order to really improve the whole OBT topic, what Chris said is like, we need this predicted off block time. We need high quality input data that could either be achieved through uh, computer vision with a camera, and then you have all the uh, highly accurate timestamps for everything that happens around the aircraft, but even also include um, data from within the terminal, DCS, as I said, uh, in order to really understand, okay, not what is only a, a target off block time that is set by the ground handler, but really like what, what will be the time where the aircraft will go off block? Is it possible to predict the time of arrival to the runway? We can use the same concept of machine learning for predicting how long a flight or how long an aircraft will actually taxi from the parking position to the runway based on historic information, based on actual information uh, from the day. Mm -hmm. um, but also, for example, we can use uh, cameras installed along the, the, the taxiway system to really also detect aircraft uh, passing through a certain um, checkpoint, so to say, in order to really predict when an aircraft will arrive at the runway uh, to also improve the overall uh, uh, staging of, of aircraft uh, departure sequence. And with that, eventually reduce the buffers and, and increase the capacity of the overall system. 
if I, if I can maybe add one thing there, because earlier we talked a little bit about sustainability, which I think um, was an important topic going into the into the COVID crisis last year. Um, but going forward, I think it will remain an important topic. And, and and coming back to your point about you know when does an aircraft arrive to the taxiway, I think what's interesting there is that currently often aircrafts being pushed back, and it it will start all the engine engines. And then taxi with a single engine or or, or multiple engines to the to, to the to the runway. Um, however, if you know when you know you're going to end up at the taxiway, and you subtract the number of minutes that you need to warm up the engines, um, you could actually only start one engine, taxi on a single engine to the point where you have to start up the other engines to make it on time to the runway to be able to be ready for departure. Now, especially on airports that have somewhat complex taxiway systems and longer taxi durations. Um, such as Schiphol. <laughs> <as> Schiphol. <laughs> uh, this could actually make quite a difference. If you then think, you know, that there's, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of, of flights leaving there per year. And even if you save one minute per departure on, on one or, or three engines, um, you know, you're saving precious full fuel, um, CO2 emissions, and also reducing the noise signature of the airport at the same time. So, you know, sometimes people are talking about sustainability. Can we afford it in these times when you know there's almost zero income? I think we need to look for the cases where uh, improving sustainability and achieving decarbonization goes hand in hand with cost savings because you know it's it's a match made in heaven. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, fully agree. And and in the end, again, it, it's not about investing in new technology investing in in electric um tux or in in i don't know some 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 other heavy equipment it, it's basically with 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 machine learning algorithms and and um other minimal investments such as cameras for example you can already achieve a lot as you said if you if you um shave off on average maybe 30 seconds or one minute of a dual engine taxiing where you could also work on a single engine taxiing and and you you simply invest in algorithms in in data and maybe uh, six seven ten cameras around the airport that's a minimal investment it's it's it can be done very quickly and you already achieve a tremendous effect on the on uh, when you compare it over a, a full year like a hundred departures a hundred thousand departures per year so so I fully agree with you. Cost and, and money is not necessarily a reason to, to not do certain things because they are simply available for rather rather low investment. And, and the cool part is even once these bigger developments like electric flight or, or so are going to be there, these optimizations still make sense. Yeah. Because even if you need to run an electric engine for this, it will you know, be able to fly longer or uh, if you use airspace more efficiently, the capacity will be uh, better. So it goes hand in hand, I guess. Yeah, and yeah. and and what what you are saying absolutely applies to a single airport. But if we look at the wider network, especially here in Europe, Eurocontrol, uh, the CESAR project, I guess if we if we use this kind of technology not only at one airport, but if we, for example, use it at the ten largest airports, the the ten most important um, nodes or hubs actually in, in the network, we will be able to improve the overall traffic flow throughout the network with CESA in the Euro control area that we can say we can cover, uh, I don't know, five, 10, 15% more traffic per year. Now, right now, this is maybe nothing that, 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 that seems so important, but we will come back to this uh, situation where more traffic is, is coming, where we need more capacity. And even if we don't need that much more capacity, even if we get back to 2019 levels, at least we will be able to manage that capacity in a, in a smoother way and have less delays and, and, and less congestion in the higher, uh, higher air levels. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially because uh, like how many, and sometimes it feels difficult to make the business case for these kind of things because it's, it's in the bigger scheme of things, right? But if you look how many flights are, are currently delayed or being uh, held on the ground because of capacity problems, that, that's a real issue. Uh, and, and again, maybe not today, but like you said, that's it, gonna come back sooner sooner than we think. Um, how many flights are being held at, at, 
at the at the runway, for example, or even in holding patterns in the air, and just again burning kerosene is emitting CO2. And if we can just to increase the, the predictability of the system, that means that we can decrease the buffers that we have between flights. Mm -hmm. We automatically create space that we can fill with those aircraft that are currently just idling because of a lack of space. Yeah, yeah, and and I guess that that also uh, that actually raises or or that 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 kind of answers also another very important question that that often come up um, when we when 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 we listen to to conferences when we speak to people within the ATC industry within the airspace management industry um, how this whole predicted off block time fits into the wider vision of of, of airspace management um, but I and, and so I guess that's that's a very interesting topic I guess um, another question that that I think Chris maybe maybe you you can elaborate a little bit on that one is also how does this kind of relate to the future of, of airside operations? Like how, how will a predicted off-block time, for example, have um, or change the way we work on the airside uh, level of an airport in the future? Well, I guess if you really want to look further out, um, I think it's not crazy to say that, you know, we will see a reduction in the, the sort of the human resource component on the apron or on air side, and we'll see a higher degree of automation and, and autonomous vehicles. Um, and, and, and maybe, you know, it, it will be still a while before we can go to a fully autonomous air side, but I think there will be a slow gradual path. Um, and, and, and that's actually already underway because there's already a lot of pilots and, and trials going on with autonomous vehicles. And the cool thing is that all these autonomous vehicles you know, they'll, they'll have a sort of an understanding of their direct surroundings. And, you know, they will not bump into an aircraft because they'll have cameras and sensors and lasers that will prevent that from happening. But in order for all those different small autonomous components to behave optimally in the overall airport, you need some sort of operating system that basically tells all these little components, um, you know, how to operate and when and where to be. So very simple example could be if you have a, an autonomous passenger bridge, um, you know, that, that will connect to an aircraft and will not hurt, you know, hurt the aircraft or, or, or um, make damage to the aircraft. Um, but the question is, you know, it, it needs information when to pre-position. So when is the aircraft almost at the stand so that it can pre-position what aircraft type is coming so I can pre-position in the correct way. Um, how is the turnaround going? Is the door aircraft door closed so I can, you know, retract autonomously? Um, and, and and that works for a passenger bridge, but also if you have an autonomous uh, baggage cart or container or, or dolly, um, you know, if it just operates autonomously on itself, it might come to to the aircraft at the wrong moment. Um, however, if, if if we can detect the, the the perfect moment so that you know it can come and directly offload and can go again, um, you know it needs someone to tell it you know what is that ideal moment. Mm. So the way I see it, you have these autonomous actors and you have this operating system that looks at all the autonomous actors and continuously calculates sort of you know what is the situation now, what's the situation going to be, and then basically gives out the the, the orders of how those individual agents should act yeah i guess that's uh that that's definitely a vision that that we will see i mean we 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 discussed it already uh some some time ago in madrid during the igHC so i i can see that coming and i th i know that yata is also looking into this like the the automated stand of the future and so on and so forth improved prediction of the off block time um will have the biggest effect if it is used on a if it is yeah used or, or being introduced on a network level so um for each airport it will be relevant it, it it will already add value for each airport but in the end if we really want to get most of uh, out of it then it will be something that that only really shows its value once it is used by multiple airports throughout the network and Again, I'm repeating myself, 
primary or the, the most important ones are, are the big hub airports. And that's perfectly in line with uh, Eurocontrol's present efforts, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, on, on their side, um, Eurocontrol is, is very concerned about how can we improve the capacity of the existing Absolutely. network, um, but also how can we make the whole network run smoother uh, for the future. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Nice. Thank you for your insights in old block time and old block time prediction value. It's really important for the ACDM, regardless of whether it's ACDM or non-ACDM systems, it will add more efficiency and more capacity for the air traffic, more efficiency for air, air side operations.